volume per minute, there's a few things we can look at. We talked about having a voltmeter, which is good. Another thing is having, a, three things I would say if you have that, an unwound paper clip, a voltmeter, and a magnet. So the first thing to do, and it's in your manual, but if you're not getting any rate reading, or no volume per minute, one of the first things you can do is take your, uh, reset your meter count to one, turn your, you know, have your system off, turn your master switch on, and one boom switch. And then take this sensor out, just take it, loosen the jam nut, take this sensor out, and turn it out, and then while it's still connected to the cable, take a magnet, because it's, re remember I said it's reading in the magnets in the turbine, go back and forth, north pole, south pole, and look at your total volume, and numbers should start counting up on there. We put it, we put it to meter cal one, because we can't do the electronic pulses as fast as the turbine spinning. That's why we put it back to one. So if that, as we fly it back and forth, uh, and if it counts up, then we know we got something internal in the flow meter. Something's jamming it in or something. Now we know if it's a mechanical thing. If you have a, if it does not count up, now we know we got something either from the sensor or to the cable. So the next thing we could do, we take, we, let's take the set, see if it's the sensor. So we take the sensor, disconnect from the cable, and now we take an unwound paper clip and we'll go between the ground and the signal. And we simultaneously tap them several times. If you tap the cable with those settings, so meter cal one, master switch, and one boom switch on, it should count up on there. So if it counts up, then we know cable is good, sensor is not. And I'll tell you one thing about the sensor. There is no gray area in these sensors. Either they work or they don't. They don't work a little bit and then go off, work a little bit. When a sensor goes bad, it just goes bad. That's just the way it is. So that's how you know a sensor is changed. And if it's not, then you can check voltages back to the cable. What I'm trying to tell you is, don't throw a no flow meter in if it's something with a, either a sensor or a cable. It's probably not gonna make a difference. You don't have to go all the hassle of taking the old flow meter out. All right? By the way, I don't know if you did, but there's you shake, there's a rattle in here. We do that on purpose. We wanna make enough play for the turbine to go back and forth. Uh, I had a dealer from Canada call me and say, oh, I wanna tell you a defect in your uh, manufacturing. I heard rattles in there, so I took it upon myself to tighten the jam nut on there so they don't rattle anymore. So now the turbine won't spin freely. I told them, guess what you gotta do? You gotta go back and redo that. If you sent any of them out, you have to go readjust that. So. So if you get one that doesn't rattle, that's bad. That's right. It's, there's something jammed in there. But you get where I'm going I'm, with these components, checking these things before you throw a whole new flow meter in. You probably don't have to. Make sure that these other things are there. If you got the right, tools, it takes you maybe five minutes to check this out before putting a $700 plus new component in.